Quick Hacks, a skill so widely developed in Cyberpunk 2077 that it warrants both a list of 17 unique and different shards, as well as a whole perk tree dedicated entirely to improving their use. Indeed, if one were to throw all of their time and levels into improving their quick hacking ability, it could become possible to fully dispatch enemies without going anywhere near them. Not as satisfying with gratuitous violence as the Sand Deviston and Berserk perhaps, but there's certainly a brilliance to having ultimate power with no need to get your hands dirty. In this video, I'll be providing providing my ranking of all 17 quick hacks in Cyberpunk 2077, as well as a bit of explanation as to why they rank where they do. Not only that, but I'll be sharing top tips on how and where to acquire each one, which I've also left a list for down in the description if that's more helpful. Now remember, this video is my opinion, and whilst I will be providing arguments to back up my reasoning, others may disagree based on a differing playstyle or just having extra information that I've missed. If that's the case, please comment down below, as I'm very open to constructive criticism and it's constantly teaching me and other members of the audience things we may have missed. For this video, I'll be using the Tetratronic Rippler Cyberdeck, which came in at number two on my Cyberdeck rankings video. Go check that out for a breakdown on the pros and cons of each of the best Cyberdecks to find out which one is best for you. Despite coming in at number two, the Rippler had the quickest upload time by far, and thus we'll be featuring in this video to let us test out quick hacks as many times as we possibly can. Right then, let's get into it. Down in last place, we have Request Backup. Now, this quick hack is pretty self-explanatory. It calls enemies over to one another. The only real utility here is that you can use it to try and group enemies together and better utilize quick hacks, which spread to multiple enemies. Now, whilst that sounds useful, I personally have struggled with the control aspect of this one. There's no deciding who gets called over to who, and in terms of strategizing and stealth attacks, this thing is more a waste of time and RAM than anything. There are many quick hacks on this list which work a lot better for a stealth approach than this one. Also, in my experience, the enemies didn't even come over half the time. Still, if you fancy it, there's an uncommon version available from Yoko Tsuru over in Kabuki. In fact, she sells almost all lower level versions of each quick hack, so if you're wanting to try any of these, head over to her. Next on this list is Whistle, and Whistle really suffers from the same issues as Request Backup. I get what they're going for here, it's the same mechanic many other games have. Assassin's Creed springs to mind. The idea is obviously to isolate enemies from the group in order to perform a stealth takedown. Now, personally, I don't think Cyberpunk unfortunately has polished enough stealth mechanics for this to be either a flawless or enjoyable system. Half the time the takedown doesn't work quickly enough and the entire base gets alerted anyway. I'd have been much better off employing other quick hacks further up this list to take enemies out silently and where they stand, to be honest. If you want to give it a go though, then there's a Netrunner over here in Coastview, selling the epic version. Third from last is Memory Wipe. Now this, this can be useful, very useful, in fact. It essentially forces enemies to forget they're in combat, and that can be brilliant in smaller scenarios, especially the epic version, which spreads to nearby enemies. My issue, my main issue with it is, when taking on large groups of enemy gang members, it serves only as a temporary setback. The affected enemy is stunned for a few seconds before appearing to realize that they're in combat once again. I'm guessing this is because they're still on a network with the rest of their squad who are in combat state. The thing is though, for the RAM cost of memory wipe, I might as well use something that sets them back more permanently, or even straight up kills them. There are a few instances in this game where memory wipe would be a better choice of quick hack to other alternatives that are cheaper and more effective. Though I concede that in certain scenarios, particularly one-on-ones and small groupings, this can be an immensely useful quick hack. Next up, we have Sonic Shock. Now, this is used to both deafen enemies and cut off their communication network. It's reasonably cheap on RAM and has a quick upload time. It's useful, sometimes. More convenient for isolating enemies than the first two, that's for sure. And it helps with sneaking around and making noise, so that's a bonus. The reason it's right down here still, though, is whilst it can be a useful component when using stealth, it's just not as good as other hacks on this list, which have more utility in both stealth and combat situations. I can definitely recommend it, though, especially for full stealth runners and Yoko Suru can again hook you up with a rare version. I'd definitely recommend crafting the legendary though. To be honest, if it was just the legendary on this list, then it would be higher. Basically, the legendary version makes the affected enemy imperceptible to their allies, almost like placing a perception filter on them from Doctor Who. Enemies can't hear or see them, and it's brilliant. 
Now this is where it starts to get fun. Cyberware malfunction does exactly what it says, disables a target's cyberware. It's particularly useful against netrunners and annoying Sandeviston users. My gripe with it is that many, and I mean many, enemies don't really have any cyberware to hack. I've come across entire groups of enemies before, perhaps from a specific gang, but for which this quick hack was unusable and thus a waste of a slot. In fact, I think I had to go and find a different situation to normal, especially to showcase this quick hack. So, whilst it can be invaluable, valuable and brilliant against higher powered enemies, its usefulness is often lost on the more common day to day Night City gang member. Weapon Glitch is yet another quick hack which is generally more useful against the stronger individual. This one is great for buying you a spare 5 seconds of time in combat. Something I found though which is a bit annoying is that if you're trying to incapacitate an enemy's weapons entirely, this won't cut it. This guy here, he simply switched to another gun after I wrecked his first. Now, sure, you could just repeat this quick hack until all the weapons are gone, but there's a cooldown on this thing, and I fail to see many situations wherein you'd need to fully disarm enemies. Overall, Weapon Glitch is a great little distraction and better suited to powerful enemies, but there's a much better alternative to this quick hack in my opinion, which we'll get to in a minute. Synapse Burnout is a combat quick hack that's great for taking out enemies who've already lost health. The lower an enemy is, the more damage inflicted by this thing. That being said, there's a number of things about this which pit it lower than the other combat quick hacks on this list. For starters, Synapse Burnout deals lethal damage taking it off the cards for any Cyber Psycho gig as well as other enemies you want to leave alive. Furthermore, it's more expensive and generally less damaging than other quick hacks higher up on this list, making it hands down less effective. It does have the ability to send nearby enemies into panic, but in my experience, this feature isn't particularly necessary to take out an entire group of foes. Furthermore, this is one of the few quick hacks which can't be bought from Yoko and instead can only be crafted or acquired by hacking the chip given to you by Meredith Stout near the start of the game. Something you don't necessarily want to do for, <clears throat> well, reasons. Into the top 10 now, in 10th place, Overheat. Now this is a brilliant quick hack, especially if you stack a lot of features which cause quick hacks to spread. Not only does this apply long lasting damage over time, higher level versions also essentially incapacitate enemies and prevent them from performing actions. Now whilst this quick hack can be insanely powerful, it's really best used during the start of a fight, wherein it has time to work its magic and weaken enemy health to, well, something pretty low anyway. The more time this quick hack runs, the stronger it'll be. Only problem therefore is it's certainly not your best bet for anyone who's detected you. Still, for the stealth netrunners among us, a worthy addition to the cyberdeck. Without a doubt, the best control quick hack in my opinion. Cripple movement does exactly what it says on the tin. Furthermore, a rare or above version can spread to multiple enemies, making it immensely useful. You can literally pin entire groups of foes for a good 8 seconds or longer and leave them utterly helpless to be dispatched in whatever way you then choose. It's good fun and can help you buy some time when dealing with many foes at once. It's also the better alternative to Weapon Glitch, which I mentioned earlier. Our first ultimate quick hack on this list. Detonate Grenade is a whole load of fun. It's especially useful, of course, when used around a big group of enemies. Even if it doesn't take them all out fully, it'll cause a lot of chaos and make a great distraction for moving closer to other enemies. It's chaotic and brilliant. Only little issue I have with it is that very often enemy grenades won't actually be that powerful, and you might have been better off just taking enemies out with individual quick hacks. Still, it's worth using this thing just to potentially set off a chain of explosions and watch enemy gang members go flying off their feet before going in to finish the incapacitated group. Remember Sonic Shock? Well, Reboot Optics is similar to that in many ways, only this time taking out sight instead of hearing. Personally, I find this infinitely more useful, as enemies have a much tougher time shooting at you if they can't see. Whilst being unable to hear gives you a small edge in stealth, completely blinding an enemy means you can literally stand right in front of them, make sure to line up the best aim with a throwing knife that you possibly can, then take them out. It feels mean, to be honest, like taking away their fighting chance. Still, it's amazingly useful against singular foes and is even good at isolating enemies in larger combat scenarios. It also spreads well, which means you can wander through a room with absolutely zero problem from enemy onlookers. Or, I suppose in that particular moment, enemy offlookers? 
probably the best distraction technique of all quick hacks. With Cyber Psychosis, you can sit back and watch the enemies destroy themselves. However, this type of power comes at a price, and it is indeed one of the most expensive quick hacks in the game. Great for using at the start of combat for an initial distraction, but beyond that, you're probably going to want to reserve RAM for other quick hacks, as this thing will tax even the best RAM recovery systems. Still, Cyber Psychosis is hands down one of the best quick hacks to bring into a larger group of enemies, ensuring they're not only having to fight you, but fight their own allies as well. Contagion is insane. Whilst it may not deal out the same sort of damage as others on this list, its ability to spread between foes is second to none. Pop this a few times during combat and soon you'll find almost everyone you encounter will have significantly lower health bars. Also, it's just satisfying to watch as your singular quick hack upload spreads over and over and over again. In fact, if you total up the overall damage across multiple enemies from one use of Contagion, its damage output can reach ridiculous heights, making Contagion one of the most most invaluable quick hacks for facing off against multiple enemies at once. Down to our last four, System Reset is a quick hack that makes things like Whistle utterly obsolete in my opinion. With the power to cripple a target's nervous system, this thing not only takes out any target in a single use, but it does so silently. You can seemingly do this before entering combat and surrounding enemies won't even notice. Granted, this comes with a longer upload time and one hell of a base cooldown, two whole minutes, but it's incredibly useful nonetheless, especially if you can get it to spread to multiple enemies like I did here. System Reset is the ace up the sleeve the quick hack which can always be depended on no matter how dire the situation gets. The enemy off switch, as it were. And I love it. In third place is Ping. I mean, come on, it had to show up at some point, right? Ping, of course, is Cyberpunk's answer to Witcher Senses, a quick hack to outline all enemies and devices on a local network. It's one of the cheapest to use and invaluable in all scenarios. Without Ping, planning a stealth attack would be 10 times harder. During all of my uses of Sandevistons and Berserk, I have missed one quick hack above all others. And that is this one. But at number 2, the suicide quick hack does exactly what it says. Not only that, but the legendary version can send enemies spiralling into panic as well, which honestly makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Of all the ultimate quick hacks, this one is simply the most straightforward, as well as extremely confusing I suppose for opponents left standing. It's useful in both stealth and combat scenarios, and I mean, come on, there's just something a bit psychotically fun about stopping an enemy charging you with a gun only to make him turn it on himself. Just saying. Finally, at number one, after testing each of these out within various combat scenarios, the favourite that I settled with was Short Circuit. Now this thing may say non-lethal, but trust me, it is lethal, without killing anyone of course. EMPs are unsurprisingly pretty freaking deadly in Cyberpunk 2077, and with the 5000 base damage I was able to get this to, I can't say there was a single enemy that this didn't utterly one-shot. As far as quick and clean goes, Short Circuit is hard to beat. Okay, sure, System Reset may be cleaner, but Short Circuit is also cheap, with an incredibly fast upload time and cooldown. If you're packing, say, the Tetratronic Rippler and have decent RAM recovery, you're going to enjoy pretty much unlimited use of this thing. So why bother running in with guns or arm mods when you can take out each individual enemy with one quick and simple command? There's no doubt Short Circuit is not only my favourite quick hack, but one of the most overpowered pieces of kit in the entire game, an absolute must-have for any Netrunner build. In fact, it's so in valuable to me that I've been using it throughout all these tests for any time I simply need to take out an enemy. Somebody charging me perhaps, or a single straggler from some powerful AoE attack like Contagion. Whilst quick hacks like Ping are generally useful across the base game and a shame to go without if you're running Sandeviston for example, when actually running a Netrunner. This is undoubtedly due to a combination of price, effectiveness and sheer speed the best overall quick hack there is, hands down. But now I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Comment down below your favourite quick hack in the game, or even perhaps the six you take out with you if you're also a netrunner. Hell, write a comprehensive ranking list of all 17 quick hacks below if you want, and we'll take a look at how we differ. If this video was helpful to you, whether that's learning a bit more about each quick hack in general, or being able to stack your opinions against someone else's, then please consider leaving a like, as it will help the growth of the video, and by extension the channel, out a lot. I'm incredibly grateful to everyone who's shown their support for this channel thus far, 
far, whether that's by subscribing, leaving a comment, or hell, just watching the video. Now, my next milestone for this channel is 2,000 subs, and I'm hoping, with your help, that we can hit that by the end of the year. So, if you've been enjoying the content you've seen thus far, then do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see how we get on. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sam Bram, you guys are awesome, and I'll see you in another video.